smell like beer. Yesterday you smelled like beer. You always smell like beer. Oh, off my back, I had a couple of beers. Boss gives me a half a day's work. What am I supposed to do? Watch the streetcars go by? I'm no hunky drunk. I haven't missed a day down the yards in five years. They got work. Boss says, as soon as strike's over, back on full time, I can't unload those bricks until somebody comes along and delivers them, can I? Full time. Just like the old days. The old days. The old days? When are you going to get out of the old days? Nobody cares what used to happen. Guess what we got for dinner tonight. Something special. Beef soup and cabbage rolls. Showing off for the old country cousin? Well, you better get used to the tomato soup and fried fish he's going to live on here. He comes all the way from Poland. His grandfather was my grandfather's first cousin. Now, we got to show him some welcome. How long is he going to stay? And where's he going to sleep? And what's he going to eat in this dump? To your own flesh and blood, you do not ask how long you're going to stay. He sleeps with you in Janos's bed. We just say that Janos is working out of town. He eats what my money can buy. And for later, after he comes, we got a chocolate cake. Mrs. Brown, next door, she baked a special cake for Raymond. I don't want any nigger food in this house! Walter! I don't want any nigger cakes for my cousin Walter! Voice down. The black doesn't rub off on the flour. Yes, yeah, Walter, please. You know, Mrs. Brown was the first one to come when Katie burned her leg. She was just like a regular nurse. Oh, Mom, what's the use in even trying to talk to him? You better go. You better go. You don't want to miss your cousin at the bus station. I mean, he don't know this neighborhood. Now, the dumb Polak waits 10 years to get to America. He can wait another 10 minutes in the bus station. You show some respect for your own flesh and blood, you. I introduce myself to my wonderful American family. I am your cousin. I am Roman Luski. Insight. Stories of spiritual conflict in the 20th century. Insight. John, in his great encyclical Pachman Terrace, says that every man has a right to an education in accordance with his abilities. The right to a job where he can earn a decent family wage and exercise his abilities. The right to the food, the housing, the clothing required of human dignity. And yet in this affluent society of ours, a considerable portion of our citizenry lack these basic human requirements. Poverty undermines their dignity. It curtails their freedom. It jeopardizes the exercise of their rights. Destitution is almost an inescapable prison, for an inferior education means an inferior job or no job at all. And that means inadequate food and indecent housing, which in turn infects their children. Their growth as human beings is stunted. Real education is virtually impossible. They are caught up in a vicious cycle of despair. Are they able to break out? Can they do it alone? Can you and I rest content while such a situation persists? <laughs> what a guy. <laughs> <laughs> that Roman. <laughs> it ain't yet seven o'clock. He's out looking over the neighborhood. Yeah, they teach good manners in Poland. He's full of thank yous. Twelve dollars by Friday to pay on the icebox. Twelve dollars? I thought that guy said five dollars a week. 
So we missed last week, and then there's this week, and there's a penalty payment for being late. He said five dollars, five dollars a week. Let him take it away. Papa, I got the rice in there now, and the cornmeal, and, the, and there ain't no roaches or no rats or nothing. And in the summer, all the ice water you want. And I could make potato salad. I'll get you your $12. Now wrap her up good and take her down to the clinic today. She'll feel better when her leg gets a new bandage. And I don't see how a six-year-old kid can be so clumsy she's got a bump against a stove. She's not like the boys. She, well, she's kind of slow moving. She daydreams, you know? Remember how the boys could run. Janusz, whenever sure, the... Oh, sure, you're Janusz. He was so fast, he couldn't even make it out of the back door when the cops come in the front. <laughs> in jail. For one lousy portable TV set. Three generations in this country, we lead a clean life. Now we got a kid locked up with a record. Janusz said he just thought we'd like a TV here. Yeah, this used to be a good neighborhood. When my folks first moved into this apartment building, there was nobody in it but good, solid Polacks. Twenty dollars a week, you could put food on the table for a family of eight. Dances at the church every Saturday night. But when I was 15 years of age, I got a job plucking chickens and brought in twelve dollars a week myself. And then these damn colors start to move in. The whole neighborhood went to rot. Well, their kids can riot and burn, bust into stores, anything. The cops just let it pass. But let one good Polish boy like Janusz get in a little trouble and... The toilet stopped up again. Might as well try to clean up in an outhouse. I looked around for Mr. Marcos. But, of course, he's nowhere. No. But let Saturday come around. He wants a $17 a week rent. You don't have to find him. He finds you. We owe him for two weeks. Don't you think I know that? Hey, Pop, why don't you quit working and go on welfare? You get twice the money and you'd get it regular. And you wouldn't have to break your butthole in bricks and stones. I work because I am a man. I don't take handouts. Three generations in this country were never on relief. No handouts, no welfare. Just white trash, just poor. And your father never had a chance for the education you got. You got this year and one more year, and you're through high school. And that teacher, that Mr. Adams, he says you got a good chance to make state junior college. With your head for numbers, why, you could be a boss, maybe. Well, you could be a big man. Maybe run your own gas station. Sure, Ma. And if that don't work, well, I'll just run for president. First All-American Polak to make it to Washington. <laughs> Don't laugh. That's not so impossible. You ever realize how lucky Janusz is? He doesn't have a future. He doesn't even have to worry about it. He took a complete cop up. He doesn't even have to worry about serving an army. Yeah. Take the bus over to the clinic. She's too heavy to carry. What about you? I'll walk. I done it before. Besides, when I work today, the boss will pay me. Wait. I know what a good man you are, but when you were late, I thought you were sick or something, so I gave the job to Burke. But, Mr. Morgan, I always come in. Anyway, it was just a half day's work, two lousy truckloads. Tomorrow? Well, uh, things don't look too good for tomorrow, either. Listen, Lusky, I'm doing all I can. Everything's slowed up. It could be a week, could be ten weeks. Ten weeks? Aside from the food and the rent, 
I gotta have 12 bucks by Saturday. Well, look, as soon as some work comes up, I'll send a message right around to your house. I don't hang around the house. Look, I'm a, a little short myself right now. Come on, in advance. And, uh, look, as soon as some work comes up, huh? I'll see you. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir, I have the blueprints right here. Come on, it's not the end of the world. All right, Mr. Polanski, let's make that for late tomorrow afternoon. Well, we usually close at 5, but uh, if you can be here by 5.15, I'll wait for you. Don't worry, I'll be here. Do you have an appointment? Lushki. Oh, yes. Just sit over here, please. Now, Mr. Lushki, if you'll just fill in these forms, we can begin to process your case. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. I don't write so good. Maybe, uh... Of course. You just give me the answers to the questions and I'll fill them in. Name, age, and address, please. Walter Lusky, age 54. I live at 140 River Street. Apartment or individual dwelling? Apartment. Length of residence? 21 years. Own or rent? Rent. Size of apartment? Parlor, kitchen, bedroom, bathroom down the hall. Names and ages of dependents. Wife, Anya, age 44. Daughter, Katya, age 6. Son, Stefan, age 17. Son, Janos, age 19. Janos is in jail. It was not his fault. He, we just he... want the basic information, Mr. Lusky. If Janusz is not at home, he won't be considered under your allotment. Now, for saleable goods other than immediate household furnishings, do you own a radio? Yes. Television set? No. A power boat? Bicycle? Motorcycle? Car? No. Anything of saleable value? Refrigerator? Small one. We don't own it yet. I have to have twelve dollars, and the man was going to take it away. And your occupation? Day laborer. For five years, I lived in hall for the Acme Building Company. Call Mr. Morgan. He'll tell you I. I always work hard. Are you presently employed? I wouldn't be here if things were good. Now I don't work. No, I have nothing. Oh, boy, is it not? <laughs> Ever since I can remember, since I was a little boy, I dream of nights like this. We get later, I dream about America. When I was in school, I study English. I thought someday, I speak this English to my Uncle Walter in America. Ah. <laughs> and now I am here. <laughs> Today, after working, I walk in streets. And I know I'm not dreaming. I saw a motorcycle lot with thousand machines, more than in all Poland, maybe. I go in a supermarket with so much food to feed the whole village. I even stand on corner and eat a an hot dog. <laughs> just like American, eh? Well, there ain't any supermarkets in this neighborhood, just little mama and papa stores. He must have walked all the way over to 43rd Street. Uh, who's knowing I can walk all the way to California just to see America? It's like dream come true. <laughs> just two weeks I am here now, and already I have good job, yeah? Number three, buzz boy, and tomorrow I put in name for night school. Oh, That's night good. school? Yeah. Well, four, you already, you already finished high school in all country. 
Now, how much education do you need to be a number three bus boy? Oh, well, we go in business together someday, maybe, huh? Lusky and Lusky, you Lusky like that? Lusky. You show me the day when you can get your own business, and you can put your Lusky in front of my Lusky any time. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, maybe not right away, but tomorrow I make good start. I work hard. You are like me. A real Lusky, you like to work hard. Yeah. I have worked hard since I'm a little kid. Mm. Not like some sons of guns. We're book smart, but lazy. <laughs> lazy, like the no-good colors. <laughs> I drink to my cousin Roman, my own flesh and blood in America. Ah, and I drink my thanks to my Uncle Walter in America. <laughs> and I drink to the Oneida County Welfare Agency that made this phony party possible. And I drink to the number one phony, who raised his family in the slop that Lusky's don't go on welfare. You know? Who doesn't know? Since the first welfare check come in, I know. The whole building knows. You don't like, you don't like niggers? You don't like old man Marcos? You don't even like Mrs. Brown next door? Don't you think they're glad to spread it up and down the street and, and around school that my old man's on welfare? He's your papa. You got no right to talk. I to got like a that. right to talk. Because I'm telling the truth for a change. Now, why pretend he? Why pretend he got full-time work when you know he hides out in some hunky tavern playing pinochle all day? Why not face the fact that we're run down, beat out quitters? We're losers. The coloreds, the Polacks, the whole neighborhood. We haven't got a chance. Lusky and Lusky, business partner. That'll be the day. I, I can't even keep a C average. And I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the big man to put the Lusky's in business? Y'all gotta be on grass to think I can get out of this ghetto. But Mr. Anders from school said you was doing so well. Uh, was doing so well. Not good, not tops, just slow Polak well. I haven't got the guts. I haven't even got the clothes to go to school. My old man's on welfare, and I'll be on welfare. It's the way it's gonna be. But this is America. Every man is free, every man can fly. You talk like every day some big Fourth of July parade. We're all in prison in this neighborhood. Our kind don't get good jobs. Nobody gets out of here. But you have food, you have bed for sleep. Oh, we don't even have a TV. I don't have a TV so we can watch the pretty pictures of how other people live. My brother, my brother Janusz is in jail now because he just wanted to see some pretty pictures. That's how good we got in America. <laughs> I, I do not understand. <laughs> My uncle cries because he is drunk. Yeah? No. He's crying because he's sober. <laughs> Standers. Now, I know you're the big deal, the hotshot troubleshooter for Whittier High and all that jazz. But I want you to stay away from my mother. Your mother wants me to stay away from her, too. It makes her nervous to find out that you haven't been to school for two weeks. This isn't a social call. I'm ready to turn you over to the truant officer. No big deal. What do I get, the electric chair? Look, in three months, I'll be 18, and I can be a full-time dropout. Till then, I'm just practicing. Hey, look, will you just leave it alone? You're going to spoil my game. Sit down. Don't you want the neighbors to see you sitting with a Negro? You better get used to my black face, because I'm going to keep talking to you till I find out what I want to know. All right. So what do you want from me? First, I want to know why you've been skipping school. Second, I want to know when you're coming back. I can give it to you, short and sweet. First, I dropped out because I'm not making it. Second, I'm never coming back. All right, we'll start again. Oh, uh, what's the use in kidding around? 
You know that people like me had not to be in school in the first place. I'm a loser. Okay, so in your freshman year, you got pneumonia. You missed five weeks, but you got your work caught up. And last year, Janos. You slipped way behind in everything for a while, but you still squeaked through. This year, you've been doing good work. And suddenly, you stopped? I've talked to your teachers. You're OK in English, history, and social studies. It's algebra where you're going to need some real hard work. And Mr. Smith says he'll give you some after-school time. Why not hang in there? Even Einstein must have had some rough times. I remember when I was a kid, I never Here even... Here we go. Now you're going to give me some high-minded spiel about how you're a Negro with three strikes against you, and you made it the hard way. That one usually works. You know a better one? Look, you're one kind of nothing, and I'm another kind of nothing. I'm poor. Got poor. That means... That means I was nothing when I was born. I'm nothing today. And as far as I can see, I'm going to wind up a big, fat zero. And that's a lot of slop. Oh, you don't understand. It, it, it's like... It's like trying to take apart a bum car. What do you got? Rotten tires, rusty wires, headlights that don't work, a cracked chassis. You know what that car's made of, and you know it's no good. You can tinker around all you want, but you can't make anything good out of it. You see, look at this. I know what I'm made of, and I'm no good. Like they say, I'm a chip off the old block. How old is your father? 50, 51? That means he was a kid, 13 or so, at the start of the Depression. Yeah. He said... You know, you ought to hear him tell you about how great it used to be in this neighborhood before all the coloreds moved in. And he never went to school. Uh, he can hardly write his own name. Foreign stock, ethnic neighborhood, language problem, depression, no schooling. One kid in jail and the other a dropout. If I have three strikes against me, your father's got a dozen against him. And not all of his own making. OK. So what do you want me to do, cry for him? I just want you to stop crying for yourself. You're not going to get even with your father or the world by making his same mistakes. Or maybe you'd rather concentrate on something a little more important. Wait for your coffee? No, I think I'll go over to Pete's and see if I can dig up a pinochle game. Hey, Pop, if you ever want to get your ears pinned back at pinochle, I'll give you a good game. <laughs> you beat me at pinochle? <laughs> That'll be the day. I'm glad you made up to your Papa, Stefan. Made him feel right, I could tell. I, I didn't apologize for anything. Yeah, but you used a nice voice. That's an apology. He took it good. Hello, Auntie Anya. Ah. Here, you sit down. I'll give you something to eat. Oh, I eat already. Oh, well, have some coffee then. Ah. Oh, oh. Ah. You look like big, beautiful America is getting a bit too big for you. <laughs> Surprise? Yeah. Ah. Oh, isn't that cute? I bought it in drugstore for Katya. <laughs> I hope it will not break right away. <laughs> oh, it'll make her laugh. <laughs> oh, she's gotten so restless now that her leg is almost better. Oh, thank you, Roman. Oh, it's nothing. Katya. Oh, it's hot, huh?
I got big troubles too. Uh, I tomorrow for night school must write a composition. I should put down what I think about America. So why not? I thought you were in love with the place. I am. But I should have wrote when I was still in old country. Then I thought I knew all about it. America is what I expected, but now I don't understand, not all of it. The only thing that is really free here is freedom. The rest huh, is hard work in America. I never knew how hard. You make study again, eh? Yeah, I'm thinking of going back to school on Monday. Huh? If I ever get this algebra through my head. Well, what make you change, eh? Well, school's the only place that makes sense for me. And if I got a chance, I gotta take that chance. You know, I thought I had my old man all figured out. Show to me where you are, huh? Algebra, old country, new country. Algebra, all the same. <laughs> oh, I'm still right on the first problem. Right up here, top of the page there. Oh, yeah? Well, that sets A minus B plus C equals A plus B. Oh, that cancels out there. You see? Uh-uh. But even Albert Einstein must have had some rough days. Albert Einstein? I didn't know he was Polish. <laughs> what is the next one here? No, oh, that one. I can't understand it. Uh, well, you see, that is the same. Insight is a production of the Paulist Fathers, a group of Catholic priests who serve their God by serving those outside their church. <laughs>